Hello everyone and welcome to the pitskill.io Porsche Cup sponsored by Simquips. I have now remembered to turn my microphone on so you can hear me and you will also be able to hear the man I am joined with in the commentary box, Casper. Hello. Good evening, Roy. Um, good that we can finally uh, be sound on the <laughs> stream. Indeed, yeah. I, I, the ramblings of madmen in silence, um, thankfully not heard by him. So now we can, um, yeah, maybe it's now's a good time to bring back up the standings and have a look at where we are with Rhys Tattersall leading the way on 100 points in front of our last the last championships winner, Johan Leff. And we have Jesse Flowers and newcomer Faisal Atas in P4. And yeah, a, a good combination of new and veteran drivers in the championship. Definitely. Um, a lot of old names, a lot of new names. So it will definitely be interesting to see how we end up at the end of the season. And I'd like to say, actually, talking of old names, I've just seen the name at the top of our standings. And a driver who I didn't think was going to be able to take part in much this season due to an injury, but Sergei Sebastian got himself up at the top and ahead of um, Johan Leff, who we know is fast. Not seen a lap from Tattersall yet, but uh, could we see a new challenger for this championship emerging? I think if I've read and seen correctly in the different chats, I think Serge is actually breaking with his hand uh, using uh, some paddle on the steering wheel to break um, since he can't use his foot due to, due to the injury. He sustained last week so i mean if that is the case that is supreme bad manners to for uh Doji to uh, get all the way up to the top of the times with a um a braking mechanism that I, he must have only been practicing for the past week or so that yeah, is definitely. that is insane adaptability from uh yeah one of our fastest drivers of the community and uh yeah we'll be good to see him out here in the porsche cups It will also be interesting to see how um, it goes between uh, Rhys and Johan this week. Uh, last week out, Johan took pole and Rhys managed to overtake him during the race. Now we have Sergi in the mix as well, so could be a three-way fight for, for the win here. And with Johan, I think just getting himself warmed up here has just gone a second faster than his previous best. Now a 2.086. And... Um, yeah, as I was saying before, I think we've seen in the Discord, uh, Reese showing that he's got a two, a, a high 207 in practice. So, expect we're going to see the times come down throughout the session as the drivers get their eye in. Yep, I've just looked it up. Um, Sergi has been using the, the wheel clutch as a break so uh, that is uh, very impressive yeah so some, some, the least. some insane respect for him there that is uh, to get used to that in just one week of driving and to be putting in such competitive pace um, yeah really showing what talent that driver has As we currently see Johan half a second clear of the rest of the field, but with only 16 drivers uh, having set the lap time. And our championship leader has come across the line and has gone P2, um, one and a half tenths off of left. Is uh, but not that close to his practice time so perhaps there's a few more tents to be gained in this session with just uh, six minutes remaining of the session and apologies I have just noticed that I do not have the session timer up so I'll make sure I get that up before the race session 
This week everyone is in the 992, so we don't have anyone in any lunatics in the 991s. Oh, that is a shame. <laughs> it was a, although maybe not so much of a shame because I think they were a little bit more unpredictable than the uh, 992s in the race. Definitely, uh, but they were rapid in a straight line. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, Championship sponsor Chris Wright currently sitting down in P8, some 1.5 seconds off the pace. He's currently actually on an invalid lap, so we'll maybe check in with someone else and see how they're getting on. I love Chris's team name. Yep, the, the man is uh, not adverse to a little bit of promotion in his team name. It's quite funny because I suspect the only people who are going to be seeing that team name are going to be the people watching the stream and will already be aware that the race is happening. Telling me confused. Yeah. Although, that, uh, I'll stop talking nonsense and I'll start talking about uh, Reese Tattersall, who is looking like he is about to absolutely demolish the time of left if he can keep it together for this final corner. Could be the first of our drivers, or I don't think he's quite going to make it, but close to breaking into the 207s. Reese Tattersall, we're 208.0. Some six tenths faster than left, and wow, throwing down a, uh, a real gauntlet here. Very impressive. It will be interesting to see what Johan can respond with, with four minutes to go in the session. Well. Johan just responding with an off-track there, I think. Yellow flags out for the French driver as he found himself in the grass. So he's going to have a couple of laps left. As long as the tyres are okay, should be able to get himself round and onto a new flyer. Yeah, it looks like he will. If you have fuels, fuel for it, it looks like he will manage two more laps. And one of the last season's championship contenders, Sam McCarthy. Currently down in P9, just six tenths off the back of Chris Wright. So he's got a uh, quite a golf to close up if he wants to gain some more positions from this qualifying session. But he's on track to gain a substantial amount of time as he comes down the long back straight. Uh, Sam mixed up his livery a bit. Because if I remember correctly, he was running a bit brighter grey last season. Um, I think he's always, at least all the time I've seen him in the Porsche Cup races at least, he's been running this dark grey and blue livery. Um, perhaps it just looks brighter on some of the circuits. Obviously quite bright out here in Kota today, so uh, might just look That's a little nice. darker. Might be it. It's looked a bit different. <laughs> He comes around the final sector now. He's finding good improvements here and really making the best of the track. He comes up to the final corner, which might be enough to uh, jump him up in front of both Sawyer and right ahead of him. And it does. Up into P8 goes Sam McCarthy. Good lap. And we'll see him slightly more out of danger. The good start as a quite a treacherous turn one here at the circuit of the Americas. Interesting to see what approach these drivers take heading into turn one. So hmm. many different lines you can take through there, and such a wide entry and such a narrow exit. Yeah, it's definitely a pinch point, um, and has caught many drivers out. But most races I've seen here has actually been quite well behaved through turn one. But we'll, we'll see how we end up in the Porsche Cups with, well, I was say, uh, with the no traction control on exit. That is very true. But at least for this race, you know, you're, you're joining me here in the commentary box and you're uh, able to step out of the stewarding room, which, um, yeah, it was slightly different uh, perspective for you on Wednesday when you're having to steward all of the cars going through turn one. <laughs> Definitely, that. That will be interesting, to say the least. 
As we see Reese Tattersall actually in the pits. So he won't try to set an even better lap time. And we've got just 45 seconds remaining of the session now. As yeah. car 127 has been disqualified for driving the wrong way and oh, quit no. out of the session. Oh no, double O oh, no. <laughs> qualifications in ACC only lasting the session that you're in so he would have been able to race oh he's back in maybe just hoping that he could um, skip the disqualification but uh, no such luck is out for the rest of the session we'll be starting in uh, E25 for tonight's race As we watch our last race's pole sitter come around down the long back straight it doesn't look like he's got enough in hand to take away pole position from Reese Tattersall but might just be able to get himself a little bit more security from the cars behind although it doesn't look like there's anyone near to challenging the top two in this qualifying session As we see Chris on his last flying lap here. Must have just started this one. He's not far into the lap at all. As Bergie coming around into the final sector. As we mentioned before, for a driver driving with a handbrake, he's currently looking to improve massively on his previous best. Will be enough, I think, to jump him up into P3, and it does. Bergie Sebastian. Not too far off of uh, left in the end. Only one... Oh, not even... Just three hundredths of a second behind. And uh, could be a good race. This has been set up right now as I think Chris Wright backed out of his final lap. So just Sam McCarthy to go, I think, who is on for an improvement. And oh, he invalidated it, was up by half a second, but drove the car completely out of bounds. And we'll start this race in P10. Well, we're going to go for a short break and we'll be back very shortly for tonight's race. As our drivers pull away from the grid to go away on their formation lap is Reese Tattersall, who will start this race on pole position, followed by Johan Left and Sergei Sebastian. Impressive to see Sergei manage to slot it into P3 there. It'll be interesting to see what he manages in the race. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be uh, interesting to see how he gets on with the braking into turn one. Um, is he, you know, obviously, he's going to have to you know, react to the cars around him. Can't just go off of muscle memory on his uh, hand control braking. So let's hope he's managed to get in enough practice to uh, actually be able to have the feeling of the car on the brakes. But... Uh, I'm sure a driver with his experience should find it too difficult. We've got our trio of the uh, Equips cars out on circuit. First of those is Balash Fahit in the Inquips. And we have got Chris Wright in the Simquips. And it is, oh, actually, nope, I can't find Matthew Peltzer in the lineup. That's disappointing. Or am I missing someone else further back? Oh, actually, we've got a few other personalised deliveries, I think. This looks like a... Uh, an interesting delivery from Henstra. Looks like we have a few of the same there. Yeah, I think Henstra and Skinner are running the same delivery. 
Uh, ACC camera is not giving me a very good view at the moment. <laughs> None with either. The infamous no practice gang. Oh, there we go. He's got a very American looking livery there with uh, Pizza Hut logos over it. Big thing since we're at the Circuit of the Americas. Who else was running a custom with I'm sure someone else was. We have the no practice gang. I think Joe Wilson here. Oh, we've got Joe Wilson and I think... Oh, who is that? The 103 car. That's Von Liebenstein. Got two other American themed liveries. Yep, those will be ones to watch out for. That's we stay. Coming to the final two corners. Who was that? Was that Joe Wilson drifting? He's just getting heat into his rears, it's fine. It was an impressive drift. As our grid forms up, it brings us around the final corner. Gets on to the start finish straight before the lights change, so that's handy. Oh, oh who's that in the background? <laughs> I think that's one of the American liveried cars. I don't know. That might be Skinner. Oh, green lights, and we are racing in Texas. And it looks like Tatsel's got a good launch. And is that Sebastian looking up the inside of left? Uh, nope. That ends up having to be a bit more cautious through the corner. And it's Reese Tatzel leading ahead of the left and Liebenstein. With Sebastian dropping back into P4. Perry has made it up into P5. And Vibeck also up into P7 as we've got yellow flags out. And there is Carnage in the background. I'm not quite sure what's happened there as we've got numerous cars dropping towards the back of the field. the front it is Tattersall still leading ahead of left yeah I think I saw Chris spinning out at the back earlier yes let's see if we can find out what happened there This is Chris Wright's perspective. Oh, and just, uh, I think the seas parted in front of him and exposed, well, his sister car there, the Binquips livery, living up to its name. And, um, oh, yeah, Chris Wright now dropped to the very back of the field after what was quite a strong qualifying. Up at the front, Matthew Perry on the attack. Nearly getting two for the price of one as... Joe Wilson getting a little bit squirrely on the throttle as well in the background. And that has allowed Vibeck through up into P6. Yeah, this is being a very big pinch point on the opening lap. Uh, as Reese and Johan has managed to pull out a three second gap on Sergi. Yeah, three seconds in one lap. I think this is going to be the theme of the season. Our two race leaders disappearing into the distance. But we've got a good battle over our final podium position as Sergi Sebastian leading a train of cars into the first sector. And, uh, oh, I think we've got a little bit of carnage up at turn one. What has happened here? That looked like an absolute mess. So these go through fine. Oh, and it's like a contact between Faye here and Skinner. And yeah, just oh, a little bit of a mess all round up the top of that. Yeah, I quite quite few cars spinning so far in this race. Oh, 
Yeah, those S's may be just catching drivers out as they drive different lines as they're trying to go side by side and just not knowing where they can get on the throttle. As I think that is Skinner going very deep into the hairpin onto the long back straight and that's going to put him under pressure from Wright who is the surgeon at the moment up into P18 from the back of the grid looking to the outside as Skinner tries to defend both the left and the right as it manages to if he can keep the position get ahead of uh, Duckley oh, oh sorry that is that, that is Lee behind actually in the pink car that's Skinner in the, uh, the Pizza Hut livery car they actually managed to get the overtake done there Chris continues to look for a way through. Well, this would be a brave move up the inside, but Chris pulls it off. Plenty of space given there from Lee. And Chris Wright up into E17. And what is turning into a bit of a recovery driver. A recovery drive, sorry. Oof. <laughs> Late move across the track there from Skinner, just across the nose of Wright. They head into turn one. Right, just having to pull back out a little bit as we have another spinner. That time it was Skinner spinning it round. Skinner being a spinner. I didn't want to be the one to say it, but uh, indeed. <laughs> Bringing the the pun south. Chris right up into P16 and can now start to try and think about closing that six second gap up to Balash Bay here ahead. Looking a bit further up the field we have a little train forming behind uh, Parry in P4. Yes, Sergio Sebastian has been able to Stretch his legs a little bit up ahead. He's got himself a two second gap back to parry, but behind. There is quite the train. All battling for position behind. Or oh, as Von Liebenstein getting a little bit twitchy there on the throttle. He needs to be careful not to add himself to the list of spinners in this race. It'll be interesting to see how the tyres will hold up at the end of the race with the amount of uh, sliding we see everywhere. Yeah, with that quite twisty and technical third sector, there's a lot of times where drivers have to be uh, applying the throttle with quite a lot of steering lock on. Going to be spinning up those rears, and yeah, as you say, could be uh, damaging the rear tyres. Only a 30 minute race, so not going to be such a huge problem in this race. Mind you, these drivers do not have to pit in this race. It is a sprint from lights to flag. Well, as I say that, Henstra into the pit, so I can only imagine that is the damage. Yeah, I think he might have been involved in the turn one incident earlier. So maybe just feeling the car out and deciding it's it's not worth it to continue with the damage he had. And behind this train, we have got another. I was going to say battle, but um, a little bit of off-roading there from Svoboda as we joined that. Have a look and see if we can see what has happened. Well, I'll check driver. Oh, it just, yeah, I think was worried he might end up rejoining into the side of another car. So it takes to the grass runoff. Um, nice sensible decision there. And um, well, a cone just deciding to launch itself into the air with no one near it. Interesting physics there from ACC. <laughs> battle over P4 continues. 
time it's Robert Weidbeck who's applying the pressure to von Liebenstein. Weidbeck, who uh, appears to be a driver of no nationality. We don't have a flag to put against this driver's name. Finish straight. I bet look into the inside way too far back to ha really have a think about anything there. As they come through again, von Liebenstein get in the rear a little bit slidey as they come through the exit down into the S's. Haven't seen any DTs yet, but we don't know how the drivers are on the the good old track cuts yeah not sure about the um, yeah, whether they're on any warnings but I can certainly tell you there's all manner of invalid laps popping up on my timing screen as we go through this race everyone just juicing using all parts of the track yeah, it's one of the few tracks actually in ACC where the white line actually notes the uh, the limits of the track a lot of other circuits it's uh, the edge of the curbing but here i think other than the final corner um oh, sorry the second to last corner i think everywhere else the track limits are the white line makes it <clears throat> easier for us as stewards to to know whether a, a car is on or off track. Indeed, it looks like von Liebenstein getting a little bit of a scrappy exit there. Not going to matter too much on this part of the circuit. There's a uh, very short runs into the next corner, but von Liebenstein squirreling around all over the place out there. Doesn't seem to be dropping him back too much in terms of pace, but can't be doing those rear tyres any good whatsoever. Let's see if he keeps it under control coming out of the final corner. Oh, seems quite tentative. Oh, and that time it is Weidbeck. And so whichever car I'm not watching is the one that decides to slide it through the corner. Hmm, a big mania. As we come down into the S's. Yeah show you where the drivers probably are struggling the most for the track and it's this technical twisty first sector and a half of the circuit very tricky just to, some some of these corners requiring so much patience from the driver just to let the car roll around breaking on one apex rolling it into another picking up the throttle at just the right moment so, very easy to very easy to either carry too much or too little speed and either turn in too early or too late and just mess up the rhythm. Yeah, so real sequence of corners that can make or break the lap. Uh, much like the S's at Suzuka, but I feel even more disruptive of a driver's rhythm. At least with the uh, S's at Suzuka, there's very distinct starts middles and ends of each of the corners whereas these you're sort of breaking into one apex to carry some speed through into the next one it's a very very odd sequence of corners and this these four cars keeping themselves very close together throughout this race as Sergio Sebastian it disappears off into the sunrise. I should say sunset. Yeah. Actually, it's six thirty-seven p.m. at the track. Apparently. Oh, it's uh, sunset then. Sunset, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Reese has managed to pull out a two-point-six second gap to Johan. And we have Sergi four seconds after Johan, so. Quite spread out up at the front. 
Yeah, not seeing quite the battle we had at the front as we did out in Barcelona last round, where Patel kept Lefe honest all throughout that race and uh, in the end picked him with it was just 10 minutes remaining to go in the race. It was a, a tight battle throughout. It seems like that's all with the pace at the Circuit of the Americas. Well, that's where that's we have seen. Just a small, small mistake in these cars can just take your whole lead away. So. It's not over until they have crossed the finish line. Nope, and we've still more than half this race remaining to run. I just have to keep their concentration. Oh, as Weidbeck has gone very deep into the hairpin before the long back straight. Could be an opportunity for Wilson to try and slip into the slipstream here. You see just gaining, gaining. Is he going to look to the inside? Having a peek. I think it might be a little bit optimistic to go for a lunge here. And slots in back behind. Definitely an interesting battle we see here as they try to just survive by both attacking and defending. Not behind these two. Oh, I was gonna say Chris Wright has caught up to Blash Fay here, but they are having one hell of a slide through the second sector. That was quite the tail slide. Oh, which car is which now? <laughs> which well, well, is the well, sim quips and which <laughs> is the bin quips? Well the uh, the car ahead at the moment is the bin quips. But uh, with the way he's going, he could very well live up to his name for a second time in this race. He's getting very, very sideways through some of these corners. And is soaking up a lot of pressure being applied by Chris Wright. I think we just have had a change for position in the battle over P6. So it looks like Joe Wilson made that move up into turn one. Just managing to take the inside line. Gets himself well ahead before the S's. As we see Chris being all over the back of Balash. Trying to get his way past. Well, looks like Chris has got a good exit, but it's not that long a run down into the hairpin for the back straight. This is the all-important corner to line up that perfect exit and get the run down. And it doesn't quite look like it was enough there for Chris. Quite the distance to the car ahead. I'm just going to have to sit in and just hope for a mistake from Balage at some point. We have seen him sliding that car around, so just needs to keep applying the pressure and be patient. Uh, all this battling has brought D's and uh, Svoboda into this battle as well. Uh, these cars behind definitely have the pace over Balaj, but he's doing well in the defence so far. Yeah, and looks like he uh, might have some damage from his little uh, ventures earlier, so that might be why he's sliding so much. Yeah, it was a well. The, the one incident we dealt, or the one collision we definitely saw, was between these two very cars as uh, Chris Wright went straight into the side of Balage, maybe taking a. Uh, Taking a version to the desecration of his Simquip logo and just decided to give it an absolute punt. Yeah, definitely looking like Chris has the pace at the moment, but just not given the opportunity to make a move. And 
not in the part of the circuit where you can really try anything, even with quite a considerable pace advantage. Yeah, through the, the first sector you just need to stay with the car in front then to then try and get a better exit out onto the back straight. And if you would manage to have uh, to get a better rhythm you could try a move here into into the corner before the back straight, but the the best overtaking position is definitely after this long straight. Well, well they're definitely closer this time around. Still don't think it's going to be close enough, as I think that was Chris Wright just getting on the blinkers there. Letting Balazs know he's here. Balazs moves squirrely onto the racing line. Chris not close enough to really try anything at the moment as they come through onto the final sector of the circuit. And then uh, into this sector, as well as just like with the first sector, you can't really do anything um, unless the car in front makes makes a mistake. Yeah, I mean, this is at least the sort of sector where if the car ahead does make a mistake and you can get yourself considerably on, along the side, you can upset the rhythm of the car ahead, maybe force them into a slightly compromised line. Uh, you've got a few more opportunities than you do in the first sector, but yeah, either way, it definitely relies on the car ahead of you making the slightest little mistake to open that door. As Chris, again, right up behind the lash come down towards turn one. He's closer, but not close enough. I think Chris has rolled off the brakes just a little prematurely That Compromised his line through the corner and that has allowed the lad just to drive away just a little bit. It looks like Balash might have Upset his rhythm a little bit on the entry there. Having to slow down a lot mid corner. You know, as we were saying, so tricky to really capitalize through this section. If the car ahead of you is slow, you just end up having to uh, lift out of it to avoid running into the back of them. There's really only one optimal line through that sequence of corners as Chris Wright is actually now under attack by Dees. And it's going to be Dees who we need to watch now on the run down. The long back straight. We'll be getting the double slipstream from the two cars ahead. Looks like Chris actually managed a better exit. Um, they will stay ahead for now at least. This Roboda has dropped off the back of this fight as well. Now some 3.2 seconds back. As Crows has made it past Sosinski. Into P17. And we we'll start to try and catch up to Lee ahead. We return to the battle of the quips. As Chris Wright continues to chase down Balash Fahit. Coming down the long back straight, or the sorry, the start finish straight again. Still close, but never really getting close enough to threaten a move. Oh, as Balash going heavily over the apex curb at turn one. Unsettles the car, but it looked violent, but it doesn't seem to upset the pace of the car coming through. Yeah, but then suddenly you might hit it at the at the wrong angle and just spin out in these cars. So. Well, yeah, we've seen yep. that plenty of times this race. Oh, as um, well, is Chris Wright going for a bit of an optimistic um, lunge there? And well, I think the penalty naturally applied itself there. Yeah, definitely. As uh, oh, Wiedbeck is all over the back on Wilson for uh, P6, 
heading down the back straight. Oh, coming around the outside at the end of the back straight. That is, well, optimistic, but uh, would have been lovely if he pulled it off, but just too much of an extra radius there at that quite tight corner. But Vibeck showing he's got the pace at the moment. He's really applying the pressure on Wilson. over E6 is ooh, Wilson won a hell of a drift on the exit of final corner yes, bet. Has, a, has a glance to the inside I'm, I'm not sure if that was just trying to get into the mirrors of Wilson um, it seemed like he was way too far back to uh, really have any legitimate chance at a move I'd just be trying to get into Wilson's um, mental uh, state just try and disrupt him let him know he's there yeah as we can see Weidbeck is gaining a lot of ground through the first sector but not close enough to actually try something down into um, this corner here It'll be important for him to really line up the exit for this hairpin, but puts himself considerably out of position there, trying to, uh, as I said before, trying to get into the mind of uh, Wilson, but uh, didn't open up the corner as much as he could have done. That. That's going to have compromised him down this long back straight. Vibeck, I feel like he's glancing a bit too early, going for a half hearted attacks and uh, really needs to pick his opportunities sit, sit in the wheel tracks until you've uh, actually got the opportunity to pass I think all of these sort of half-hearted glances aren't really going to be getting into the, uh, the head of Wilson, he knows you can't attack from back there Yeah, definitely um, with the, the experience Wilson has here in the community he knows that and a half-hearted attempt won't really go um, the other way unless you actually give them the space to take it. And this gap staying at about 0 0.8 seconds. And again, Vibet just pulling out of the slipstream coming down the back straight. Not sure whether he's maybe just overheated his brakes or something because he seems to be spending a lot of time oh as a big mistake from wilson has just allowed my bet through so who knows maybe i'm just talking nonsense because that i didn't even notice what happened there oh that was it twitch from wilson on exit just as he was looking to put down the power had to back out of it as the rear stepped away from him and that's what allowed my bet through up into p6 uh, Wilson doesn't want to give up that position. And now that he's got a car ahead of him, has found himself some pace again. As Vibet misses the apex, and this is going to give Wilson a very good run down the back straight. Closing, closing, closing. Approach the corner is Wilson going to try and make a lunge on the brakes. And it just backs out of it, thinking the better of it. Oh, as Vibet goes deep over the orange sausage curbs, and that is going to allow Joe Wilson to try and take a fast sweep around the outside. Vibet getting a little bit out of shape himself, and Joe Wilson back up into P6 for now. Just over two minutes to go. It will be an interesting last two laps for them of this race. Oh, 
It's turning into a right little scrap here as Weidbeck tries to go up the inside, manages to stamp on the brakes and back out of it just in time. It's going to cost him on the run around the final sector as Joe Wilson all comes out over the sausage curbs. And now Weidbeck with the run coming down the start finish straight goes to the outside into the brakes and we'll try and carry the speed around the outside wow that was committed from Robert Weidbeck right around the outside just chucked it in there let the car carry the speed and uh, Joe Wilson playing ball giving him plenty of space there but that was a brilliant overtake from Robert Weidbeck Yeah, definitely. A very good scrap we see here. Both cars giving giving each other respect, showing showing good sportsmanship. Well, as Joe Wilson's got the inside for the hairpin, backs out of it, but got oh got the all important apex, but just tried to get on the throttle too early there. A real snap of oversteer and that's going to cost him. I think we're going to have, oh it's going to be close to whether we get another lap in this race. I suspect we may not. Yeah it will be very close as we have 10 seconds left and Reese is <clears throat> soon coming around to the final corner. Yeah no. It will be the second here. Well, here we go. Reese Tatsu uh, coming around the final corner. <clears throat> Take the checkered flag. And the win here in round two at Circuit of the Americas. Extending his championship lead is Reese Tatsu. Followed by Johan Leff. Third place. Or regaining the third place earlier in this race. And with a gap not as large as it was earlier in the race. Sergi Sebastian. XP3 followed by Matthew Parry, P4, it's Samuel von Liebenstein, P5, Robert Weidbeck, P6, followed by Joe Wilson. Crossing the line now are Sam McCarthy and John Sawyer for P8 and 9, and P10 will be Simon Eklund. That's like actually being Balashi. Uh, Ferreira got to pass Tranmer. He did indeed in the, in the dying moments as he's Tranmer out of fuel as he stops on the start finish straight, or maybe just uh, stopping nice and early. But it's Fahit in 11th, Tranmer 12th, Dees in 13th, Zaboda P14, with Chris Wright after that spin and contact coming home in P15. Kenny Crows coming around. The final few corners. Bring it home in P16. Be followed by Jack Lee. And Dias Sosinski. And then still battling. I don't know, I think. That is actually a lapped car behind. That is Lorenzon and Thorgilson, I believe. And our final finisher will be our P20 car, Richard Skinner. And there we have it. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. There's been another action-packed race in the uh, Syncrypt Porsche Cup. Thank you very much for joining me in the commentary again, Casper. Good to have your expertise in the comms box. Yeah, thank you for having me. Really good fun being here. And um, it's certainly going to be fun again next week as the Porsche Cup heads to Monza. Which And I think it was, it's going to be a wet race. A, a wet race in Monza. Okay, well, yeah, make sure you tune in for that because I suspect that will be carnage. Uh, until yep. next time, um, have a very lovely rest of your evening and uh, we'll be back in a few short moments for the highlights of tonight's race.